<clears throat> what is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We've got an awesome guest with us today. It's going to be an awesome <laughs> show, and Greg is in rare form uh, due to some technical issues. He's been broadcasting from his beautiful and scenic condo. Uh, in, in the East Bay area. Well, I'll let him tell that story. But uh, anyway, <laughs> Greg, the junior grandmaster himself, what is uh, what is up today? What's up, pimps? A lot. Good to good to be with you and Ty. This is going to be a good show. We had some serious laughs, guys. All of you know that watch this show on a regular basis. I always try to get Matt to do the the, the nose bridge rub because I said something so offensive, and I did it before we even went on air. So this is going to be a great show. You know, technology can be awesome or it can just stress you really out. And today I was sitting in my office. I went in to do filming with uh, with viral marketing, and and then all of a sudden my computer decided to oh by the way greg we're just gonna update you randomly stay tuned this takes a while that's exactly what it said so i'm like oh, okay like 20 minutes or something and i'm like mother blank blank like an hour and a half later i hit matt up at 10 30 i'm like dude i gotta go back to my house because it's not updating so i had to race back here i literally was going like 85 miles on the freeway cutting people off arm barring old women you know stepping over small children getting here running up four flights of stairs no joke that's really not a lie running up four flights of stairs barging in like a like a bull in a china shop into my house flipping every light on getting everything going sitting down and i'm here so happy friday to everybody and i am stoked for this call ty is going to knock it out of the park you guys that just the prelim stuff that i was getting was epic content so get out your trusty pens and your hobbit pads and take notes that's right <laughs> <laughs> wow that was an epic opening so first of all let's welcome in the real star of the show today ty crandall ty how's it going <laughs> good guys how's it going today awesome very very good uh, better for me than it is for uh, for greg apparently who uh, who had me, to run me as well yeah still in the snow both ways to get home <laughs> yeah but now but now i see i have a cat just climbed that climbed in a litter box behind me is about ready to drop a big dump so this is now it's really now it's gonna <laughs> smell bad yeah. fantastic <laughs> God, right, for, me. That visual. for everyone that's listening at home, you're welcome. Uh, but anyway, Ty, <laughs> give us the uh, give us the 60 second bio on who you are, where you are, what you do. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Ty Crandall. I'm actually the CEO at uh, Credit Suite. And uh, what our company does is we help business owners with all types of uh, help uh, obtaining business loans and financing, as well as building credit for their uh, business EIN number that's not linked to the individual social. That's right. And so not only we're we going to talk about that because it's an incredible way to scale your business and uh, and there's a lot of other benefits, but there's two other things that we're going to talk about today. Number one is Ty's experience with live video, including Facebook Live, Periscope, uh, and all the stuff that he's doing, which is helping him grow his business that we can all learn from. Uh, and the second other thing that we're going to talk about is just Ty's experience of growing his business and how he's prepped to scale. And just there's a lot of things that we can take away from from what he's done and just the entrepreneurial story there. So we've got a ton of stuff to get into, but let's start start there with the uh, with the live video so kind of sh now that people know what you do and it's potentially uh, I mean it's a, it's an unusual topic and you have a different spin on it because you ha actually have a marketing mind but it is something that in the wrong hands could potentially be a dry subject so it's interesting that you're getting a, this all this engagement and all this stuff on on live video so first of all just fill people in on what you're doing what what are the main tools that you're using and how are you approaching live video when it comes to live video, you know, I was uh, I was a little adamant about I was a little hesitant about jumping in, and it's weird because I do a bunch of of, of webinars, a lot of webinars. There's, I have a lot of content that's out there, but for some reason, you know, when I looked into Periscope, it just really, really scared me. And uh, and I remember when I first got Periscope, I kind of turned it on, and then I don't think my family saw me for like a month. I was just lost in Periscope. <laughs> like, I mean, literally within a week, my data plan was maxed. I got that alert, your data plan. I mean, it was gone. I would wake up in the morning and watch people like playing guitars in the mountains of North Carolina, and then I would watch like actors behind set, and just a couple guys sitting around a warehouse smoking weed. It didn't matter. It was just all <laughs> awesome. I'm like, this is great. And then people just ask these guys questions. So I just became infatuated with live video but it was still really you know scared about going live and we did our first periscope live many months ago and i mean by our second or third one we had like 650 live people on that stream what? it was really astonishing and <laughs> oh, I'm, so, I I'm like numbers. yeah well I'm that's not, the same and you know on facebook live I, i'd never seen anything like that before so I, I, have, I have i have live video envy of you right now i want 600 <laughs> people just so you know 
Well, that was one stream. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't sustained, uh, you know, but actually we did. I mean, it's not uncommon for us to have 100 people on, you know, live stream on Periscope. It's just amazing. Facebook, we ventured into as well, but Facebook kind of restricts who you'll let the, you put the content out to. They want you to pay to boost the post to get it out to more people, whereas Periscope will just put it out there. And if a lot of people like your headline or title, which they do, and they'll come in and it's just testing that to find what people really respond to, then Periscope sees that a lot of people are coming in and then starts showing it to more and more people. So it's very easy to really build a huge audience on Periscope. So it just took off for us. And then, you know, ever since we've jumped more into Facebook Live, we've jumped more into YouTube Live. And because uh, I think it's the future, you know, I think you uh -huh. guys probably agree. I mean, this voyeurism aspect of people wanting to see, <laughs> you know, inside of our it businesses so and our personal lives. It's, it's just it's become an obsessive, I think, in our culture. So it's it's been an awesome way to promote the business. It really is. You know, it is voyeurism at its best. If you guys want to see what we're talking about, you go to Periscope, get the app, hit the little globe, and you go watch everybody in, in, out there. If you want to see what Facebook Live is doing, go to Facebook Live, oh, Facebook.com forward slash live map. Um, you can roll your mouse over any of the little dots and see what you can hear and watch what they're doing. Don't click on them because then they'll know that you're going to be there. Be a voyeur and, go, and just sweep the, the universe and just watch everybody do stuff. But uh, Ty, your story is so close to mine because when I first found out about it, I always made a joke going, I feel so bad for all my friends and family. If I get Facebook Live, I will never get off of it. <laughs> and dude, my my data plan was pretty good, dude. Like within like a, like you know, like a week, like you reached your max. I'm like, what the shit just happened? I had to up it twice. I'm at like almost a oh, a family of four plan for doing Facebook Lives, and I almost reached my data plan every single month. Yeah, well, it was <laughs> astonishing. I'm at Periscope, and we remember watching a football game, and the assistant coach is filming the video, and we would tell the coach what to say to the refs when they would make a bad call, and then he got a sideline warning. I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever, that we just told him what to say. He said it, and he gets a sideline warning. I mean, it was just... <laughs> <laughs> just this whole interaction. And so I just became obsessed. I mean, literally, wherever we went, I had my iPad just carrying around with me, just watching, <laughs> you know, anything to do with anything. It's really uh, – live has just really opened up something amazing, I think, in our country over the last year. I think it has, and I think it's I, – I tell everybody this. Look, guys, live streaming video is not going anywhere. It's only going to go up. It's not going to go away. By 2020, they're predicting 80% of all internet traffic is going to be uh, live stream video. And I think that you need to start mastering it and start working on it now. If you don't think you look good, you don't think you sound good, get over yourself. It's not an ego contest. This is bringing value content. And I'm going to – I'm actually – I've been reading a really cool article this morning that has to do just with this. So I'm going to – Pop up for a second. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to let you guys talk, but I've got to get this because, Ty, I want to get your opinion on some of those, this stuff. Is sure, that cool? I'd love to. Okay, Absolutely. Give me yeah, as a matter of fact, I just saw an actor yesterday I read in the news. I cannot think about which big actor it was, but they're actually doing a video or a movie live for the first time. It's it's going to be live streamed. So Like the, uh, the shooting process of the movie the is whole, being live streamed? The movie. The movie really? is 100% live, being filmed in real time live. Uh, so it's just it's just where it's going. I, I don't I think it's even more than these kind of live streams. I just think that, yeah. you know, this instant gratification that we have has just <laughs> now moved to like unprecedented levels. <laughs> <laughs> it is so true, though. But it, I love this the fact that I probably will miss something. But I, I like you. Everyone likes to see what's going on in your life, like what's happened behind the scenes. I did a video during Christmas showcasing my like two year old little niece riding a pony, like a, a little seesaw horse thing. And then introducing the people around the house, you know, blah, 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 blew up because it was behind the scenes. And people sure. need to stop being afraid of, oh, but I don't want people looking in my life. Come on, guys. They're already looking in your life. They already know what you're doing. And I probably backtracked a little bit on something there, so my apologies. No, it's true. I mean, the most, the, the the more you open up that curtain and let people in, the more popular it seems to be. And when you look at the streaming on Periscope or Facebook and you see what people are going to, it has to do with more of that. The more deeper level uh, that that you go, the better. I mean, like one of the, the the most popular videos I saw on Periscope was like Fifty Cent, like showing his closet. He was walking through his closet. <laughs> and like I'm like, what is this guy's like 30,000 live viewers or something? And he's just literally oh, walking through his closet showing his shoes and stuff. So it's just, <laughs> it's, just it's the future. Unbelievable. Oh, 3,000 views. If only yeah, we could insane. get there soon. We that's will get right. there, Matt. We will get there. Yes. Yes. But we need everybody's help. Yes. It's, a, once, it's only a matter of a few zeros away, really, if you think yeah, about exactly. it. Exactly.
Yeah. You know, the, you know, the one thing, Ty, you know, speaking about that, the one thing that I've really found to make Facebook live effective and efficient is to be a human. Um, I mean, yeah. humanize yourself. Don't don't talk business talk. Humanize yourself. Um, a great, great, great thing that I I, talk, I, I, um, I read about today is that all of us that are real estate agents that are on this right now, if you guys are going to do your first live and you're really nervous about it, here is a tip. Now, all you fools out there are going out and you're doing like, hi, this is my new three bedroom, two bath house. It's located at 123 Main Street. Oh, look at the kitchen. That's great. That's what we've been told to do in the past. This is a new take on. This is how to humanize the house. I want you guys to go. If the house has some historical value or the, or it has a story behind it or anything like that, tell the story. If it doesn't, go to neighborhoodscout.com and get information about, you know, you're going to see a cattail in a second, I'm sure. Um, you know, um, <laughs> it's looking at me like, what are you doing? Uh, go to neighborhoodscout.com. Look up the notable and unique people and places that are, are right around that address. Then tell a story about the ancestry, the languages, the businesses, the occupations, the incomes. You know, what is this? What is this area about? Tell a story about the house. Make it have its own re like its own personality. People will gravitate mm -hmm. to it because it's, a, it's you're humanizing an, un, an inhuman, uh, inanimate object. Stop rubbing the damn computer, Bandito. <laughs> now, Ty, that, that brings up a good topic, though. Like, Ty, how do you how do you take a topic like yours that you talk about with, with with business credit? How do you humanize it? How do you make it entertaining and something that's fun to talk about and it's engaging for people to actually spend some time with you on a live video? You know, I'm I'm pretty blessed. I mean, I've been pretty uh, good in front of, of audiences and speaking just naturally. That's just natural to me. So, you know, I'm very passionate, especially when I talk about topics that I'm I, that I love. And I think a lot of people are. And I think that passion shines through. So, to me, if you're mm. just talking about a subject with passion, um, and as long as you know you're legitimate in what you're doing and it's not robotic, we just I just haven't had that problem and just have really good engagement, prompt engagement. You know, ask them for comments and feedback, and then when you respond to that comments and feedback, then it just kind of spreads like wildfire because people like that. I think that's part of what they like about these live streams. It's not just looking into what we're doing; it's being able to engage with us, to be able to mm -hmm. type in comments. It's it's able, it's having the ability to ask the guys in the warehouse smoking weed questions and hear their funny <laughs> answers. Like that's just as entertaining as watching the guys sitting there. Like, and hopefully I can say that on the stream. I guess it's too late. Yes, I you can. Permission. Okay, Dude, you, you can <laughs> say anything. Trust me. Anything. So, but that's that's part of it. You know, it's the engagement. People love the fact that they can see what's going on and then engage with you and then you engage back with them. And that was mm -hmm. what I loved about Periscope. My thing was hi from Tampa. It was just it was you know, I'd just show everybody, go look, look, hi from Tampa. Look, he just said hi from Tampa because he read my comment. It was just mind blowing to me when I first really started to experience live video in that interaction. So it's that interaction and engagement that I think drives the most of it. Yeah, you know, I, I've had a lot of people that say stuff like, well, you know, I don't respond to the people that are typing. It takes away from your message. And I'm like, pretty much, fuck you. That's not how you do this. You know, you you, you want to do it because the people are there. They want to talk with you. Like when I do my live prospecting, like door knocking, I couldn't, well, I was door knocking, but doing my calls or doing my call, my video at 430 when I'm doing live prospecting or anything else. I love talking. I mean, I just did a live Q&A there and I'm like, live Q&A, bring all your questions. I talked so fast for an hour because I was trying to get every single question and it was just a fury a flurry of, of, of interaction and it felt yeah. good because people are so grateful for the information that i have stored up in my noodle for somehow because i've been around agents my whole entire life that if i can help someone you know build their business like i responded to six or seven people on facebook messages today that, and they're all thanking me for the prospecting stuff that i'm putting out there and i love doing that i love engaging and them engaging back is it the, the, ty you'd agree that there's a bond a semi bond that is formed there because now there's a trust relationship right on both sides oh i agree completely and i had a lot of that at the beginning with periscope and facebook as people would would comment after and send me emails and during the post about how much more they enjoyed the live and the interaction than just watching a video on youtube or get reading an email uh, mm -hmm. And like I said, it's just yeah. it's it's more of a conversational tone, and I, I think that that's what 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 the popularity of it is is people just being able to engage in in real time conversations with people like they might mentor that they might look up to that have you know, they've got a lot of education. So yeah, absolutely, I think that's it. We hear a lot of people that'll say, "Man, you know your voice. I know your voice so well because I listen to your podcast incessantly, or you know I watch your videos all the time." Uh, and then when they're actually listening to you and then it can engage with you, it just brings it all to a whole other level. 
yeah. what? That's a really funny story. <laughs> we Matt and I were at the CAR event and we had a booth and I was talking to someone uh, that was at the booth and all of a sudden these two people just dead stopped about faced and they're like, I know that voice. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, yes. They're like, you've been in my ears for like six months, man. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, wow, that's cool. You know, <laughs> You were, you were right there, man. Oh, I, I met uh, I, I met uh, Brinley Tucker in person uh, yesterday. She's been on the show oh, before, cool. uh, and uh, she's been on the team building podcast. And anyway, but yeah, that was the first thing she said. She's like, "Oh my, God, it's the same voice. Like you sound exactly in person, <laughs> like you do on the podcast." I'm like, "Well, yeah. Like, what do you think I was doing? Like running my voice through like a modulator to, to deepen it or something? Like, like it's, it's just, just like, me speaking to my going all going all Barry White on it and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. So Todd, have you, have you played around yet with, uh, with Instagram live or anything like that? I, you know, you said that as we were getting ready to start and I'm like, and I made a note, I didn't even know Instagram had live, but yeah. we have had a lot of success with Instagram. You know, I met a buddy of yeah. mine last year in Washington DC and he said that primarily his business came from Instagram. I said, that's crazy. Cause we don't do anything on Instagram. And you know, we try any social media channel, a lot of them bomb. And then, you know, some of them like Periscope and Instagram have just taken off for us. So we've done a lot on Instagram, but I didn't know they have live. And there's a great app that we discovered called Insta Easy. Have you guys, have you guys heard of Insta Easy at all? Uh, we is, have. It, it's absolutely sick. It, it allows you to, it basically, you choose the people that you want it to follow, uh, let's say your competitors, uh, keywords that you want to target, and then what it will do is it will go to, let's say, a competitor's page. It will then take their – the people that follow them, um, mm. and it will start liking their pictures, which and – and then following them, which inevitably then they follow you back. So it's just oh. – crazy the growth we've seen in in using this insta easy i mean our instagram subscribers have just climbed through the roof using this and it's a fairly cheap app it's it's really it's pretty wicked really that's like that is yeah, amazing. Like, like crowdfire for instagram yeah i mean mm -hmm. what, what, what kind of growth have you seen i mean what kind of time frame you know, I, I think we've had it for three months, and I think we went from like you know 200 because we're fairly new on Instagram. We had like 200 and something subscribers to over a thousand, so you know it's Whoa. four time what we had in the course of 90 90 days. Uh, and then the first month, you know, we we didn't do it at the full level. We kind of did it at a minor level, but it just takes off. And we, I don't really think about it. Occasionally, I'll I'll log in just to see what's going on and see it. But it's just an amazing growth curve. That is, I am going to go by that. I've been, I suck at Instagram. I mean, I've been looking at it the other day and I'm like, dude, I got to get back on. I got to post something. Or I don't want to post anything. I don't see anything cool. And I'm just, I would love to competitors. Like I have, I have a lot of people going through my head. I'm sure Matt does of who I, our competitors are that I'm going to go hunt down like a dog that they are. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I don't know how to post on Instagram or most of our so social media channels. So we've got, I've got a social media manager. And when I look at a platform like Instagram, then I'm, basically mapping out all those instructions, giving mm -hmm. instructions on where to go to get content, as well as compiling large amounts of content with the instructions to post them and then let her go through the mm -hmm. process of, mm -hmm. of posting. It's worked really well. But Instagram, what's been awesome for us is the engagement levels, unlike any other media channel we have. We get more engagement from YouTube and Instagram than than any of the other social media channels we have. All right. So, Ty, I got a couple yeah. of questions coming down the pipe. Steve has been asking, he's been doing a Snapchat messengers and emails to send um, uh, personalized videos. He picked up five buyers off of Snapchat in two months. Um, so that works. And so then, and then also, Mark, uh, no, is it Mark? Where are you? You went somewhere. He asked, what are you putting in, the, in your videos? So that's Mark's question. What are you putting in your videos? Well, and I use a lot of whiteboard, you know, so as you can see here that when I started doing a lot of live stream, what I basically did is I use a lot of whiteboard. So I'll teach a lesson like so, for example, this whole backboard has to do with like, you know, three different lessons about, you know, the benefits of business credit building, the steps to build business credit. And, you know, a board like this, you know, I can go through and that's six or seven different live streams. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's what we do is is I like to write out the content and it'll take some time. And then, you know, that content like on this one. Board, I've got you know three different ways you can get business loans, and that's five, six different live streams that we'll go through. And the live stream is often me talking, and then you know 360 back to the whiteboard, and we're using the whiteboards to kind of teach a lesson. And a lesson can be 
how to get a business loan only based on credit or you know the steps to building business credit this is step one in depth or the benefits of building business credit etc cetera, etc cetera. so we try to teach on a lesson and then it's me talking and then it's back to that and then i use a lot of of the internet too i'll show screens here so when we talk about business credit building we'll show actual business credit reports and you know go from theory on the whiteboard of this is how it works to let's look at real business credit reports. So we've done streams where we pulled, you know, uh, the Trump organizations, you know, business mm -hmm. credit report, the Clinton Foundation during the election, those type of things. Uh, no, but yeah, keep it <laughs> the best so. act, uh, like newsjacking, when you combine it with that, that had to be huge. It was, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was all, it was really cool to be able to do that because, you know, a lot of people are astonished that that could even be done. You know, most people that don't even know that anybody can just pull anybody's business credit profile and score. So it's always interesting because I'll do that on podcast when I have any doubter, I'll pull the hosts, I'll pull their business credit and I'll, I'll write that in there. Uh, I'll be like, I, I pulled up your business credit <laughs> profile. We can talk about this deeper if you want to talk more about it. So it's, you know, that kind of shock factor, but guys, it's, it doesn't matter what you do, right? It's a shock factor. It's the pattern interrupt. It's the doing the stuff that's different than what most people are used to seeing. That's what makes it effective. It is. That's effective on the front end, right? But there's another level to this that people need to understand. People that engage with your live post, and this is, see, I just read it. It's the last one. I just highlighted it. So I'm reading more. Yes, Matt, I'm reading it. Actually reading it. Hey, you have my um, compliments. <laughs> okay, so it says, that, you know, the people that are engaging with you on your lives, I think this is genius. It's so simple that nobody ever does it. If you if they're doing it more than once or twice, go reach out and do a personal message back to them so, and, and engage with them and thank them for engaging. And just a simple post you could do is like, hey, um, you've liked a few of my recent posts, so I thought I might, I thought you might be a great person to chat with about it you know, about that post or whatever else, get that engagement, get that trust, get that, get that next level going, because if they feel that their voice is being heard and you're reciprocating and you guys can build a bond and move forward together in some direction, maybe you don't even know of yet, just a great way to, you know, to do that. I thought that was a genius move right there. So I can't read. Yeah, I definitely think it's yeah, a genius it move. You know, we, I've been able to connect with people on our live streams. And so we have one person, for example, that she follows us and she's, you know, let us, so first person to let us pull her business credit report really engages. And so her and I've got to know each other very well off of the live streams. And we just had her on a webinar Tuesday and the webinar was massive hit just to go through and map out her success. So even being able to bring them from one media to another or being able to find your testimonials and then bring them out and be able to put them in other environments it's been amazing. I mean, we have, I don't know, 500 plus, you know, views the day after that went live on YouTube, um, as well as the hundreds of people that were there. So hmm. it, it's been very effective. The other thing we found to be very effective on Facebook live is to run audience or run ads to the actual audience that we have. So we'll run opt-in offers, et cetera, to people that are there for you know 10 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever it may be. So that's very easy with Facebook is to be able to segment that and people that are watch your videos for a certain period of times go into certain audiences. And then you have the just vast ability to be able to run all kinds of different ads or promotions or incentives to those people that are actively engaged. So there's a lot of those, those type of cool things you can do. So break that down. Un unpack that a little bit. I want to go deeper on that. Explain how you do that because that's a. I love the idea. I've always wanted to break out the audiences a little bit more and send different messages to different different groups. So how do how would you do that? Well, we go on a very deep level with with how we do things. So what we do is, you know, every prospect that comes in into our database, we give a lead score, and we score them differently based on if they watched certain videos or webinars to their entirety, or if they watched certain segments of of time on Facebook, for example. We'll run certain opt-ins only to them. So when they come in, they get a certain lead score because we know they're very, very receptive. So in our world, what we're really trying to get really good at is we have hundreds and hundreds of, of new customers come in daily, a subscriber. Well, who are our real buyers of those and who are not the real buyers now? You know, Who are the ones that will require more marketing effort? Who are the ones we can hit with consultation opportunities right away, get them into a potential sales presentation? And so Facebook has been a really good platform for that of people that are – there and we can run opt-in offers that aren't already following us or subscribing uh, and then you know people that already are we run different type of offers too so there's a lot of things you could do with us lead scoring is very big where again we'll run different ads to them 
or opt-in opportunities where we we know they opt in. So if somebody's there for five minutes, we know it's a pretty good lead or 10 minutes of the whole session. We know it's a really good lead. Well, then we'll run one opt-in offer to them. When they opt in and come into our email database, we know that is a hot lead. We lead score them accordingly, and then we prioritize then at the timing of when we promote consultations that way. Wow. Mm. Love talk, it. About, talk about next level shit. Yeah, yeah this is next level stuff. <laughs> Yeah, like this is not, Kenobi. not something the average the average real estate agent is going to do, but the average the average team does have these kinds of capabilities because they're they're already spending a ton on uh, like very top of the funnel uh, cold audience traffic, pay per click, and Facebook ads. <clears throat> what they're not doing typically is they're relying on their salespeople to just hit the phones and phone, 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 and text right. and stuff like that. What they're not doing is then circling around back to the people that have visited their website once they run those initial pay per click ads, and they're not hitting them with and offers that get them to work themselves further down the funnel by actually giving them content to engage in. So they're sure. relying on the salespeople to make the contact. They're not actually following up with an offer of saying, hey, if you're looking to buy a house, let's get you this guide on the seven biggest mistakes you make and, and like start the indoctrination phase. Uh, sure. I don't see a lot of that going on. There's there's a few people out there that kind of have that have that knowledge or that um that approach to it, but man, they're, they're few and far between, but the ones that do are very successful. Well, there's so many things you could do. I mean, when you look at Facebook live, for example, you know, let's say that you're going in, you're doing an excited walkthrough of a home. Well, listen, somebody that's there that whole time, obviously is very interested in that home. So being able to take somebody that's there for an extended period of time that watches that video, put them into a separate audience and then run an opportunity saying, Hey, listen, if you're interested in this house, take this action with a call to action. That's a hmm. very effective marketing strategy and it helps you get to the people that are the most interested quickly. Yeah, that's a really good idea. And, there, and I know you know this, but now Facebook and uh, P uh, Periscope are allowing 360 video to be shot. Um, what do you think about running an ad talking, Hey, I'm going to be showcasing my new listing in 360 degree. If you guys want to do the first official tour, you know, click here and then engage with them back and be like a home like this or this home, please take this action. Have you guys thought about using 360 video yet? With what I do, it doesn't work as well because like mm. the 360 would just be of my barren office here in my different <laughs> whiteboards in most cases for what you're describing. <laughs> It's brilliant, right? Because homes, that's what you want to see. You want to see it all in 360. And yeah. Facebook is now becoming even more without, you know, th apps like Blue Jeans, you know, it's becoming even more popular to be able to add more people to the actual stream. So I think it's a brilliant idea. I think for real estate agents to not use live makes no sense. I think you've got to build an audience. And when you have a good audience, then to be able to use live to go in to showcase properties like that with 360, and then you use the strategies we both talked about. Then you see the people that are there longer. You give them a call to action offer. The people that engage, like, this place is awesome, et cetera, you're following up and having your sales team follow up with them later, engaging with them private messages because that's mm -hmm. where Facebook is going. You know, Facebook now allows us – this last year, this is huge, guys. They're now allowing us to build lists with Facebook yeah. Messenger, to be able to market using Facebook mm -hmm. Messenger. And I think that as email becomes more and more diluted, we need more of these platforms of communicating with our customers. And Facebook Messenger is a great platform, a great media to be able to communicate with customers. So there's just so many mm -hmm. ways you could take that just from doing one live stream, find out who's interested, and then ads with call to action, following up with anybody that left comments. Comments, you just you're just getting a whole pool of prospective buyers there. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Now the Facebook Messenger is one of my is my favorite way to communicate. So any of you guys that are watching this right now or in the uh, recorded version of this, follow me on Facebook, guys. I'm gonna do a lot of what we're talking, what Ty is talking about. I'm gonna be going live on a bunch of different platforms. But it, it, it's the amazing part about it, Ty, is the fact that everyone knows that I'm dyslexic and I need ADHD, right? Well, now you do too. One more to the fold. Um, but <laughs> for me, I'm typing there with you. sucks. You and I both. Right. I got it. Boom. Knuckles. <laughs> Virtual fist bump. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. Matt, and I, so I, what I like about Facebook Messenger so much is that I can give a 15-second video, a one-minute audio, or I can write some text. I responded to everybody today on my Facebook Messenger up to almost a, a one-minute audio. That would have taken me an epically fucking long time to do, and I would have hated I would have gotten back to them. I mean, that's how powerful this thing. You can speak on any medium that you want. It's also tremendous opportunity to reach out to your past clients or anybody that's in your fr friends or family and, and set up coffee dates, lunch dates, or anything else without having to do a live, but you can kind of dip your toe in the, in the water and try the whole video thing out you know, to, to people that already know and love you. But I think there was a, 
And then you can combine those two too. So, you know, for example, you go in and you have somebody that watches a video 360 of, of the property. They stay the whole time. You could then run a separate ad to them. Go, hey, I know you're, you watched the stream today. You're mm -hmm. obviously interested in the property. Let's talk a little bit more. Click here to engage in Facebook. And you literally run an ad that when they click, takes them right to Messenger to start the conversation. So there's just so many things that Facebook is doing, especially that you could really put together and make a very effective marketing strategy without spending hardly any money to really be able to do it yeah it, it, i mean i did a i did a small engagement uh facebook ad the other day i, I pushed a video of my team member midori getting their first listing we, we we just just took off like a bat out of hell to over five thousand views in like 24 hours I was like holy crap that's some powerful stuff you know it, it, it really just makes a lot of sense to do it actually i am going to order the 360 nano camera after we after the show to tell you the truth so i don't want anyone else beating me to this damn it that's right not allowed <laughs> not allowed Hey, Ty, let me, let me jump in and give you an opportunity, Ty, to, to tell people how to connect with you. Sure, absolutely. They, they can go to our main website. We've got a great free guide that maps out the exact steps to build business credit. It's uh, creditsuite.com forward slash EIN. So that's Credit Suite, which is S-U-I-T-E, creditsuite.com forward slash EIN. Cool. So uh, so give us an idea kind of because uh, you mentioned you, you've done some Facebook Live and some live videos on Periscope and stuff like that about this topic. But kind of the, the, the thing that perked my ear up was like the top three reasons uh, why you'd want to build business credit. Get, just take us a little bit into that world so we can kind of explain how that might apply to people that are in, in our audience. Sure, absolutely. Well, there's a lot of reasons to build business credit, but you know, I know a lot of the agents follow the show, and agents are actually one of our top industries that enroll. And the reason is, is because a lot of them are creating their own business inside of a business. They've yeah. learned that for tax reasons and so many other benefits that they need to set up an entity. But what's important to note is that entity can build a credit profile and score just as you can as an individual. Uh, the biggest difference is when you talk about business credit that's based on an entity, uh, the credit limits are substantially higher. The credit can be obtained mm -hmm. very, very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, anybody that's buying things for their listings, which everybody is, you know, why use your personal credit cards? Why use your personal funds when you can obtain large amounts of credit for the actual entity itself and then use that credit itself to be able to fuel and fund the business? It allows you to do a lot more and gives you a lot more access to capital, which, you know, is why most people don't work out they, in their industry and why most businesses don't work out. It's just lack of access to capital. So just immediate access to capital when even even people cannot get a business loan. And like I said, from our experience, a lot of agents use it to then be able to fuel their business, to be able to pay the things that now they're paying out of pocket, to be able to do more marketing and do more of what they know works without experiencing, you know, the cost coming right out of their right out of their wallet. Yeah, that makes sense. Very cool. Yeah. And and, and you also separate the liability. You're not personally liable for what you're doing with the yeah. business. Uh, and like I said, anybody can see your business credit report. So it makes sense for anybody that has a business to do it because why would you not want to, especially considering you know the business credit quality determines if you will get loans or credit lines or all those things where so many of us out there are, are working on getting financing to expand. Yeah, well, that, that's what I'm curious about. Give us an idea of how you, like, you're starting from scratch. You're, you're this solo practitioner agent. Maybe you've got an assistant. You're doing you're doing some deals, but you're not, not setting the world on fire quite yet. And you want to you want to ramp up. You want to scale. You really want to maybe invest in a lead generation system. So you, you're thinking about Real Geeks or Boomtown or whatever. So you're figuring out, <clears throat> am I going to spend 500 bucks a month or am I going to spend two grand a month? Uh, or whatever the case is, and, and kind of dip your toe into uh, getting more of a leveraged lead generation system. So how do you start down that journey of actually building up credit in your business so you can potentially get a, a line and, and get, you know, essentially get investment into your business so that's not coming out of your pocket? Where do you even start? Well, there's a lot of different options. I mean, you know, in that scenario, to, there's two popular ways to go. You could, you know, go through building business credit from scratch, which is typically done using vendor accounts. So you're going to start with companies like Quill that sell office supplies. They'll give you credit when, you know, you don't have any credit established. They report it to the business credit reporting agencies. So they'll give you immediate credit for the things you're buying now anyways. You use the credit to buy it. You pay the bill on time. When those accounts get reported, you have about five of those accounts reported, then you can start to move move into Costco and Sam's Club and Home Depot and Lowe's and most major retailers will then start to give you business credit. We have about five of the Uline Quill uh, type of accounts established and then, you know, 
90, 120 days into the process, you can start to get fleet credit cards and cash credit cards, Visa cards, MasterCards, commercial mm -hmm. cards you can use anywhere um, for that purpose. You can also expedite that if you do have good personal credit. If you do have good personal credit and there's a great program out there we call unsecured business financing, even a startup can get up to 150000 It's usually 0% financing for 6 to 18 months. They have to have good personal credit. And there is a guarantee initially in the beginning, but the great thing is, is this 50, 100, 150,000 in financing you obtain only reports to the business credit reporting agencies. So you can build your business credit and obtain a lot of capital and kind of skip that vendor step because you're willing to personal guarantee, get a bunch of cash credit very quickly, use it to build your business credit and get to that next level versus the vendor account. So either way works. It's just, you know, the cash credit way works great if you have good credit and the vendor credit account works great if you don't because using vendor accounts, your personal credit's not even looked at or used for the actual approval decision. So either one hmm. of those options works really well. Just one, somebody gets money a lot faster right away using personal credit. The other one, they still get to where they want to be. They just don't have to use their personal credit to get there. Okay. So so help me understand like what's what's your role. So so let's say someone in real estate comes to you and they say, okay, well this is this is kind of where I want to get to. This is the goal. I don't know exactly how to get there. What do you guys do? What's your what's your role in the process? Well, we help with every aspect of that journey. You know, what we find is statistically, you know, per entrepreneur, which we find it to be fairly accurate, 90% of people just don't even know they have a business credit profile and score. They just, they are oblivious to the fact that their business has its own credit profile and score that can be accessed. So what we do is taking them from that level to being able to establish initial business credit and, you know, establishing the initial business credit profile and scores, walking through the steps of setting up their business credibly to be lendable, to be able to qualify for actual credit and then go through the right stages of qualification. There's just a lot of myths and a lot of confusion because people up jump stages. They start applying for credit before they have enough trade lines to do so. Uh, and that's where most people fail and don't think it works because they just don't know the right order of credit to apply for to get the results. So what we do is our technology maps that process out step by step. Our advisors work hand in hand with our customers to, to literally help them through every aspect of setting up the business credibly, obtaining the business credit reports and scores, getting their DUNS number set up with Dun & Bradstreet to all the way through from getting vendor to store to, to cash and fleet credit cards. Huh. I was just going to ask you to walk us through the process on how to start that. I'm like, well, then got that one covered. There you <laughs> go. Done. Check. 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 <laughs> so Ty, what, uh, what got you into this business? Because this is super niche. It's super interesting, but this is not, uh, you know, like it's, what, what's the story behind this? Well, you know, I owned a mortgage company. It was the first business I ever owned, and it was oh, the right. height of the mortgage industry. And I'm like, well, running a business is easy because, like, you could not <laughs> screw up, right? Like, if you were a real estate agent and a mortgage broker, like, you couldn't, you couldn't screw it up. So I'm like, this is the – I don't even know why I read all these books. I don't know why I meditate and do these things. I'm just a natural at this business thing, apparently, uh, until apparently, you know, banks didn't want to fund deals anymore because all the ones they were funding were obviously bogus. And then I quickly saw the other side of that coin. So I personally guaranteed everything in my business. I didn't know any different. Things were going great. I was getting you know, $50,000 plus credit lines. As you guys know, they were handing out you know mm -hmm. credit like it was candy at that point. And, uh, and when the business, when revenue just stopped, all the money we'd saved and all the credit just went quickly thereafter with it. So it just drove me, I mean, almost to the state of a personal bankruptcy. I almost lost everything. I ended up not filing bankruptcy, but paid a bankruptcy attorney the money and got almost to that brink. I love that cat. There he is. There's more than guy. a mysterious tail. God. <laughs> coming he's in just there. like, he's just like, just like, I'm coming in. Don't know how are we get in. Oh, there's an opening. Hello, world. There's a tail. God. Oh, man. Jeez. Greg, we're going to Yeah, after home. I went through that experience, it. I mean, you know, I, I ended up literally losing almost everything because of personally guaranteeing. And then I end up starting a consumer credit company and uh, helping a lot of people through that recovery period. And mm -hmm. along the way, a lot of our customers asked about business credit. I'm like, you know, what are you talking about? And uh, I had had about 15 years of financial experience and knew nothing about it. So when I really looked into it and realized what this was, it was just mind blowing to me that even a business from a startup phase could start getting $20,000, $30,000 credit cards in two, three months time. And you didn't have to have a personal guarantee and the separation of credit profiles between business and personal. It was just astonishing to me that this existed, and I knew it would have changed my life if I would have known about it before all that happened. 
Um, so I just decided to become an advocate. I realized nobody was out there talking about it and got out there and started talking about it and just immediately started to gather a really, really, really big following very quickly and realized mm. how big of a community the entrepreneurial community is and how many people genuinely had an interest but were as lost as I was in mm. understanding it all. So got got in, found the right people around the country that did know things about it, started building a coaching program and uh, – a lot's happened since, you know, we put <laughs> seven figures plus into it to build the technology out and everything else we've done. And now really just give anybody the ability to go through the process and be successful, even from a startup phase. So that's a big deal for me because I just mm. think there's so many people out there with great ideas, but they don't have the capital to get them off the ground. They don't have the capital to grow the business. And now we live in a world with so much capital is available. They just don't know where to go to get it. So to be able to pull all these different kinds of loans into one place, give people access to business credit, give everybody an option and a way to be able to get money so they don't have to bootstrap their business. It's just been a real passion of mine ever since. Ty, you are doing very good work for a lot of the agents. A lot of our listeners and viewers and fans are in potential cash shortage you know, s scenarios and, you know, 10,000 foot it. And I mean, they obviously need to contact you for getting down in the weeds for their own situation and scenario. What's the minimum age? What's the minimum income? What's the minimum number of trade lines that you will allow to get, I don't know, a $10,000, you know, credit line, I mean, or, or whatever the numbers are. Well, it's more, more to do with stages, you know? So in the beginning to get a $10,000 account is very simple. It literally can be done from scratch within about 60 days, but you're not going to get a visa card in 60 days. You're going to get a Dell credit card to buy computers. You're going to get an office Depot or a Staples credit card. So the say, you know, it, it's a matter of trade lines. When you get five of the U line and the quill and the monopolize your marketplace or those type of vendor accounts reported, then then you start getting very high limit, five, ten thousand dollar plus credit cards at stores, Costco, Sam's Club, BP, Chevron, Sunoco, all those type of places. And then when you get about 10 to 15 total trade lines, then that's when you can start moving into fleet and cash credit. Now, if you are fairly new in business and don't have a lot of revenues, that stuff shows on your credit report too. So it might be tougher to get cash credit at that point without a personal guarantee, without a personal credit check. But when you have really well-established credit, you can go in if you're willing, even new in business, to give the personal guarantee. Your personal credit won't matter as much when the business credit established and still have success at getting ten, twenty thousand dollar credit cards where you never would have with the credit credit issues on the personal side. So and if you're a little bit further in business, more established, then it's easier to obtain that kind of credit. Interesting. 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 I mean, that's going to help. A, that information right now is going to help a lot of young agents or people trying to reestablish themselves. They're going to reach out to you. You're going to help them work through this. They're going to be, you know, if they're skating by and you can set them up with a Costco credit card, a Lowe's credit card, whatever the, the, the things are for their businesses, the most, you know, that they need to spend money on, then they get a commission, they pay it off because they have the equipment to do it. I think that's genius, man. I think that's absolutely genius. And I think you're, uh, this information is going to help and save a lot of careers financially and emotionally well, and their marriages. And it, and it helps their customers too. I mean, you know, when they've got investors that are out there, there's a lot of house reseller and flipper programs that are available, but to be able to help their customers know that this exists, to be able to get the Home Depot and the Lowe's and the labor ready and, and all the different credit they can obtain to do fix and flips, which we see a lot of people. I mean, you know, those are two of the biggest industries that we see just naturally gravitate to what we have are real estate agents and real estate investors. And investors hmm. are very into it because they'll build the business credit to buy commercial real estate without all the restrictions of, of – or residential real estate without the restrictions of, of mortgages. And then they also love it for fix and flips because they can get all of the money they need to be able to get all the supplies, everything they need to actually execute and do a fix and flip. So I think it can help the agents as well, and it can help a lot of their customers, especially that are fix and flipper investors as well. That is awesome. And we, and we don't talk about that as much as we probably – could and should in terms of like really encouraging people. And we've had the guys like Jason Hartman on the show who have made the jump from real estate agent to investing. We've talked a little bit to Jeff Cohn about that and just about the long-term plan for most agents should be to jump into the investing game. And we probably could do a better job of talking about that because that is a real path to freedom. Uh, and it sounds like that's a great, a great tool for somebody that's in both of those worlds, or if they're an agent that's getting into the investing, they definitely need to get their act together on that sense because mm -hmm. that would having that business credit would make everything easier and it gives them a more of a margin of error. If something goes wrong and there it's, you know, repairs and stuff like that, or rehab goes over budget, they're not dipping into commission, you know, from their regular agent business to get that stuff done. And it allows you to kind of separate out the businesses from each other, which is just all good things. So 
Uh, last thing I wanted to get into uh, with uh, with you, Ty, was just we talked about this before we went on the show or went on the uh, the live broadcast, but just the, the stage where you're at in the business is interesting, right? So you're getting ready to scale, and I kind of want you to share just what the last couple of years have been like in terms of like kind of throwing everything against the wall to find out what works and then where what that's led you to and what your next steps are. Uh, the last few years have been an absolute freaking nightmare. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it has been though, right? Because like you get in and it's interesting. I watch you know Shark Tank. I think a lot of us do. And it's interesting to see the people go, yeah, listen, I'm going to get 100 sales. And then they're talking 10 steps ahead. And the funny thing is, is three years, they'll still be figuring out how to get that 100 sales. And in their yeah. mind, that's just a check. And they don't think that that's where they'll get stuck. And yeah. that's really what growing a business is about. You're just, you get stuck in areas you never expect to get stuck. And then things go really well in areas that you would never expect them to go well. Uh, and you've got your ups and you've got your downs and you've got your faults. So, you know, it's to me, it's just about doing everything you can. We live in a world with all these social media channels and all these other things that are available to us that you can get so much content and information out in this world for free at absolutely no or little cost that I think that that's where it starts. You spend as little money as possible and you get as much out in the world as possible. You find out the messages and the headlines and the things that people respond to, and then you start to put some money behind that in paid channels. Like Facebook is brilliant and you start really, really small and you figure out what works and then you make money off of it. And then we finally got to a place last year where we hired somebody and brought them in to take over the marketing and then that took it to a whole other level. Um, and you know, now we're to a point finally this year where we've got everything really dialed in. Um, and now we're ready to scale. But everything we figured out almost came at the tail end of just catastrophic failure with other things that didn't work. You know, and that's <laughs> kind of the way. That is a great. It's, that is a great quote. Everything that we figured out that was right came at the very tail end of catastrophic failure. <laughs> Well, that's business in a box. The way that it was. Yeah, yeah, that is you business know? box right there. But yeah, especially when it comes to sales and marketing, it's just yeah, it takes a while to figure out what's going to stick. Yeah, it really does with everything. I mean, I remember, you know, we got this office and we had, you know, 16 seats out there and we we found some lead providers that were just going to for free give us these quality leads and everything was just so fantastic. And we hired these with sales guy and we burned them out. So then we hired setters to work these leads. We didn't, we lost our ass on that. We did not make mm -hmm. a dime, but our setters were pretty good. And I felt bad. I thought, where else can I put these guys? Well, let's just have them call our existing prospects and set appointments. And it has been a massive money maker. So now all of a sudden we figured out how to market and get people into our funnel. And then using these appointments, we realized that we could get people out of our funnel to our sales team. And they started closing deals in record numbers. I mean, like mm. last month was, it was, it was insane. I mean, it was 40% better than our month, the previous month. And every Whoa. month we're growing at levels Good that are God. not equivalent to that, but just these record <laughs> levels. And that all came from literal catastrophic failure in doing something and dedicating tremendous amounts of resources to something that absolutely failed. And then saying, maybe we could repurpose this and just try this. And then that next thing we tried just took off. And then we refine and fine tune. And all of a sudden we realized we've got a system, but then we realized, well, we're putting a lot of appointments, but only a small percentage is closing. And so then we go to what we talked about earlier with, you know, being able to, to, to actually rate people based on their ability and willingness to buy. And, you know, those type of things make what we're doing even more effective. But I could give you a hundred examples in the last three years. You know, our best marketing campaigns have come from desperation. It's just mm -hmm. where we have a really bad month. We really got to bring in cash. We're like, oh my God, like, what can we do? We think of a hundred ideas, we do them. And then all of a sudden three are like, just amazing results. And then all of a sudden we take those three and we just put them into our regular cycle of what we do. And mm -hmm. it, a lot of that same process, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? We got to pay payroll. We got these things this month. It's been a really bad month. Well, let's do these things. Well, these things work. These things fail. Let's do these things that work on a regular basis. And as we kept doing more and more of that, we kept having more of those bad months or less of those bad months where our backs were against the wall. So literally almost all the good stuff comes on the tail end of just really bad stuff. You just have to recognize that, you know, you learn the most from those bad experiences, at least from what I've seen. You know, there's a there's a really good book. I, I just finished it a little while ago. It's called The One Minute Millionaire. Um, it, go get it on audible.com. It's a 12 hour book. These six hours are like the nuts and bolts. That's their upfront book. 
Then it's six hours on another book, which is, you know, it's a story. They, they paint a picture. They tell a story on how exactly what Ty is talking about works. Because right at the very end of the book, do this chick just come screaming in with her hair on fire to achieve this goal that she had to get done, but she had epic failure. And, you know, she was distraught and freaking out, hit every wall you know, that she possibly could. But she ultimately, because she stayed the course and thought out of the box, she was able to to achieve the goal. A great book. It ties exactly into what you're saying. So again, virtual knuck, knuckle pump. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because one of my really good friends, you know, he's the most negative person you'll ever meet, and I'm the most positive. So Pat I love Johnson. being around him just to, to <laughs> just to learn about <laughs> like how people like that think. And it's interesting in the difference of our conversations because he'll be like, "Man, my luck is horrible." He thinks the universe is against him, and I'm like, "Well, what happened? Well, my car broke down." And this happens to him. Oh, it's because you drive a piece of shit car. You know, what you got to do is figure <laughs> out how to not drive a piece of shit car. And then your car won't break down but it is like the difference in ways we think is he's like my car broke down the world's against me no dude your car's a piece of shit you got to replace that and then your car won't break down so let's backtrack this to figure out why you have a piece of shit car and if we fix that problem we fix the whole thing but it's interesting in that mindset you know that's how i think is it's like look why did the failure occur what can you learn to prevent that failure from happening again and then especially as real estate agents like well that didn't work Work or you lose a listing, well, what caused all this to happen and what could you do different next time? And as long as you continue this cycle of learning and reapplying and learning and reapplying, you know, Greg, it's just like you said, look, they like your your knowledge because you've learned. You spent your lifetime around agents. You've been able to see the failures, mistakes, apply things, and see the success. And I think that's the essential component of, of real success in a business. It is. And you to, like you did, you you did out of the box crazy ass shit to, to get where you needed to go. But people, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over again, over and over again, expecting a different result. I, old cliche, get it, but it's very true to real estate agents. Matt and I on our last show, you know, I, I shared some things that, you know, I've been doing that's been cluster fucking me for a while. And Matt was like, really? And we got to work on that It's a mindset thing that's still getting me at times, right? And I think that if you guys, if you go out and you utilize something that's around you right now that you don't think could be, you know, traditional real estate marketing, go try it. Go do a Facebook Live. Go do something that's different out of the box. Go interview someone. Go go ask them what their perfect client looks like and then see what you can do to build their businesses. Watch how fast your business grows. But it's all different, right, Ty? It's all different and it's all crazy and fun. If you, if you keep the metrics, if it doesn't work, you know, let it go. But don't let don't stop doing it in one day. Oh, I didn't get a lead in one day. I made phone calls. Okay. That is absolutely essential. Yeah. And that's what I've learned in our business is, you know, I remember when we first YouTube accounts for about 20% of our business and I'll never forget the re the day I realized we had subscribers. I was on stage showing our YouTube channel or showing a video and I looked up and we had almost a thousand subscribers. I said, oh. I cold like I, when did, I, that happen? I, when did that <laughs> happen? And we had no background on our page, no – I mean we had nothing. It was, it was the worst YouTube channel you'd ever seen, and I <laughs> – but we just – we built it just by doing the right thing. It's the consistency. you know. It's yes. a, When I started doing yeah, Facebook Live, huge. literally I had nobody on my stream. Like one person would come in, and then that person <laughs> would leave. It was, it was horribly <laughs> embarrassing. Like, that guy would show up and be like, dude, I'm the only guy here. This is awkward, and then he would leave. <laughs> It was, it was so embarrassing, but I kept doing the live streams over and over and over and realized mm -hmm. how to get one Facebook live video to go into all my groups and all my pages and, you know, yeah. and, and the, how the headline pulled people in and, you know, mm -hmm. you just learn and then the audience just starts to build and build. So that's a lot of what I found. I think it's consistency. You have to do it. There's a lot of stuff like social media you have to stick with. You have to do, you have to be consistent. And then you yeah. got to do the out of the box stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, baffled at how many agents don't have drip email sequences it's just it is mind-blowing to me there's what drip emails well yeah That's i mean like you, what is, what's that thing it's That's just interesting thing? that i've talked to hundreds of agents in my career and life and not one has ever regularly sent me content to teach me anything 
<laughs> I do. I, Thanks like to viral, list. Greg is the exception. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, like I do. List. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy to do. I mean, how hard yeah. is it to sit down and write four emails and give yourself an email that goes out once a week for a month? You're done. You just you spent literally 30 minutes an hour and just give yourself a month's worth of content. If somebody's looking to buy a home, you know what I want to know? How to get a mortgage? Should I get a home inspection? How do I know if I'm getting the right deal? How do I find a real estate agent? I mean, there's a million things that I want to know that if you know somebody's looking to buy, why would you not be the person that gives them that education? The same thing with listing a home. If you know they're looking to list, why would you not be the one that teaches them all the things they need to know to list the home themselves? What they'll do is see you as the credible expert. I know I'm preaching to the, the choir. No, right there. no, this is beautiful, <laughs> beautiful music to my ears. I know, me too. Another justification that Matt, yes, we should be doing videos to consumers. Oh, man. No, no, you can do videos. <laughs> you already do. That's fine. I don't need to help you start a podcast that tries to talk about real estate for an hour to the general public. Absolutely oh, not. It's, it's beautiful. Ty, thank you for making my day. That is awesome. <laughs> you guys, and you know, if you guys are afraid of, um, and you don't know where to get a lot of knowledge, I, I got this thing, uh, this article right here from 15 uh, foolproof real estate lead generation ideas using Facebook. I got it from a site called Playster. That's free content. I downloaded another one, 27 Killer Facebook Post Ideas 3.0. I got this thing, I think, from uh, Social Media Examiner. You know, I got this big thing. I have, uh, I downloaded another one. It's called 2017 Social Media Marketing Planning Guide. I got another one, 2017 Digital Marketing Predictions from the Experts. Going to kind of figure out what they're doing. Got another one, Become a Real Estate uh, uh, Marketing Superstar. Again, from Playster. You know what, guys? The content, the ability to learn to get out there, like Ty was saying, it's everywhere and it is free, okay? So there is no exception or reason why you cannot and should not be out there learning and educating every single day on all these different wonderful sites. Go to Wishpond, you know, and go sign up for their stuff. I mean, that's, that's another epic source of information. I mean, you guys can have all this stuff. You can do exactly what Ty is doing. You really can. Um but you're you're choosing to be an ostrich, ostrich, and sticking your head in the sand. Which, if you do, sometimes someone's going to come up behind you and kick you in the butt, and you're not going to see it coming. <laughs> wow, that, that happens a, to so many ostriches. ostriches. <laughs> it does. <laughs> that was an epic problem for ostriches. I found. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. The assault oh. rates on ostriches rear ends. Yes, I listened to this in the balls. <laughs> Just read an article in USA Today about that exact same thing. <laughs> zookeepers can't know, can't figure out how to protect the ostriches' rear ends. They have now that's hired right. zookeepers to defend the ass of the ostrich. Oh, that's right. <laughs> We're gonna have to come up with some uh, some ostrich ass armor. Oh my God. <laughs> Shock, with with shock absorbing pads underneath the uh, uh, all right so time oh time we gotta be sensitive to your time uh refresh everyone's memory oh on where God. they need to go to uh to connect with you and get the free guide uh credit suite.com forward slash e-i-n that's credit suite s-u-i-t-e dot com forward slash e-i-n and just up front when you actually enroll, I will send you these weird things called drip emails that will actually teach you about getting money and uh, credit for your business. So there you, <laughs> go. you can work so from crazy. example. You can even use mine yes. as an example. You can even steal my content and reuse it if you want, if that helps. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going right. to steal and we it. Encourage people to do the same thing with Greg's stuff, by the way. So, Greg, I mean, you put out a lot of content. You go to Neighborhood Scout. You're always on uh, you know, different sources, and you're, and you're looking for stuff to talk to the general public about. Guys, if you should never have a shortage of stuff to talk about on your Facebook Lives or your blog posts or your emails out to your database, all you got to do is just follow Greg and just copy what he says. <laughs> no, you guys really can. Also, we'll put a link in here in the show, guys. Um, another source that I get a lot of content. If you want to talk directly to consumers, go to Real times.com Matt, if you could put that in the link, my computer is way far away and it's up here and it's awkward. Sure, um, go to real stretch. Oh no, don't do, don't you make me do physical labor. Um, realty times.com. It's an information uh, aggregator where they go to consumer advice tab. It'll drop down. They have eight different sources of information. You can go there and do a, a video a day about different content. So you won't become stagnant and stale. Uh, and it's all timestamps. So it's relevant to the public now or go back and look through things that are interesting just a quick note people the consumers love numbers so four things to get your home ready for sale 10 ways not to fail at the sale of the home five ways to get your home ready for spring you know that kind of a thing those yeah, people love those ones. Types of articles yeah, yeah. so try right, it out guys. 
Well, with that, we got to wrap up uh, this one. And uh, so just remember, on Monday, Brian Casella, two-year anniversary of the podcast show. Woo! Very, very special episode coming PC. at you on uh, on Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube, uh, you know, iTunes, Stitcher, all that good stuff. Check out the couple things we've got on our website, McDanielRealEstateSystems.com, including Greg's favorite scripts, uh, which is absolutely free. So go, guys, check all that stuff out, and we will see you.